This week's episode of the show, Home, delves into the meaning of the word and its idea for the three main characters. Additionally, as Hillary makes her way back to the United States, the opening credit sequence is anew for the show, set to a montage of her amazing worldwide travels. The typhoon that shook Hong Kong in late 2014 was months ago. Essie and Puri are regrettably no longer in the forefront, and TV screens in the corners of the picture depict the Umbrella Movement protesters, who have now erected multiple tents, being raided and driven out by law enforcement. Remarkably, Margaret appears to become aware of these events for the first time at the exact moment that she discovers an old Gus t-shirt as the family prepares to depart Hong Kong. Maybe a sensation of desire for the place she's chosen to leave behind signals her coming departure. Mercy, meantime, is so much happier and more at ease with Charlie, in one of the tents mentioned earlier, no less, than she ever was with David, to the extent that her reappearance is accompanied by a throbbing musical montage. Although it's a significant stylistic divergence from the romantic moodiness of the show, which draws inspiration from Wong Kar Wai, it illustrates how Mercy appears to be feeling optimistic for the first time, even if she hasn't told Charlie that she's been pregnant for a few months. Hillary is kind of in limbo as Margaret leaves and Mercy sets her feet. She has finally broken up with David, but her return to the United States is only temporary as her father, Daly, is about to have a dangerous surgery. Daly bled a double life in India and the US, as it soon becomes evident, and the two middle-aged individuals are his other children from the elder woman stated earlier. Hillary views these amiable strangers as real-life examples of treachery, while Brinder smiles and endures their presence in the same manner as she has always endured Daleep's violent humiliations. Her half-sister's pregnancy serves as a sharp reminder that she does not, despite her parents' persistent badgering. Hillary tells her father what he wants to hear, just as he is taken in for surgery, even though she chooses not to tell him about her breakup with David, that she is pregnant and the baby is a boy. She eventually gives in to the temptation to confront him about his ongoing abuse of her mother, which she witnessed as a child and which she promises to tell her own child about someday. But this deception for his sake doesn't feel like a fitting farewell. After a little while, she returns to Hong Kong and David meets her at the airport to greet her and offer his condolences on her father's death. Hillary's guilt-ridden revelation that she feels her father was killed by her parting words is made all the more poignant and urgent by the episode's quick and understated delivery of the information, giving the impression that her father had passed away just seconds before. Though Hillary feels completely alone when the camera captures her in a wide frame as David leaves her side. All of the Mercy's epistolic address, presumably to Margaret, at the start of the play completes the circle, it quickly becomes apparent that each character's pieces are meant for both of their counterparts. As they jointly discuss surviving their conditions, it's as though three distinct conversations, between Margaret and Hillary, Margaret and Mercy, and Mercy and Hillary, have been combined into one. Notably, Mercy believes that becoming pregnant is equivalent to snatching the children of both women, because she was the one who caused Gus's death and sparked Hillary and David's divorce. Like both of the older ladies eventually allay her fears in different ways, she feels as like she owes them something or that parenting isn't worth it. At first, this collapsed trio of moments seems like a work of fiction or a desire come true as if they were sharing with us everything they had imagined them saying to each other. But a few literal objective shots, like the one where David asks Hillary to give Mercy her number, and the one where Mercy shows up at a restaurant to meet Margaret, put this abstract structure squarely in the real world, maybe to its little disadvantage. Watching it does, in some ways, become more about piecing together the logistical details, the who said what, and to whom of it all, than it does about experiencing these revelations and exchanges as though they were entirely abstract emotional spaces, akin to the prologue of the show, which draws inspiration from Magnolia. Similar problems immediately plague Mercy's story. Her argument with David and her ultimate pregnancy confession to Charlie rely too much on words and not nearly enough on tone or tense quiet. She talks about the curse she feels is hanging over her again. Charlie corrects her for forgetting her many privileges as an outsider in America, but she never feels cursed, rather, it's as if the camera is documenting her worry from her own perspective. This is evident in scenes where Mercy's confession and Charlie's response in a mirror are shown in the same frame. Since so much of expats has so far only been experienced through sensations, it falls on them to explain the full story. Having said that, a lot of their relationship becomes clear when Mercy's mother pays them a visit. It would be easy to anticipate some sort of caricatured monster, given what little we've heard about her over the phone 
but the truth is far simpler, because we've only ever seen her through Mercy's eyes, or rather, heard her through Mercy's ears. The interaction between Mercy and her mother is endearing, despite the occasional dispute and snappiness. Mercy surprises her by becoming pregnant, and she uses comedy to deal with the situation. Their subplot comes to a heartbreaking conclusion when Mercy, after receiving all the expected reprimands from her mother, finally embraces the love and support she has been given and sobs in her mother's arms. The main attraction of the episode, meanwhile, is Nicole Kidman's continued challenging and devoted performance. For the most part of home, Nicole Kidman has these somewhat abstract talks with the camera. She's accepted Gus's absence more peacefully, but in reality, this simply means she no longer has any grudges, either against David or Mercy, which also explains why she later apologized to Hillary. Mercy eloquently captures this situation in one of her voiceovers. The pain becomes a part of you, and soon you can't recognize yourself without it. Kidman plays a mother who has been shaken for so long that it has become a part of her personality. Margaret reacts angrily, but as any generally irritated mother might during foreign travel, to Philip and Daisy's immature fighting at the airport as her family finally departs for the US with Essie and Tao. Margaret looks ready to leave Hong Kong behind. Everything feels normal for the first time since Gus vanished, if only for a brief while. But as Margaret considers it, that brief return to routine seems unsettling, which prompts her to decide at the last minute to stay behind. For this, Daisy despises her. Clark and Philip are aware of this, although it appears to be a reversal of a linear character arc. Woman learns to move on from missing son, only to revert two steps. It fits in well with the overall context of the episode where all of the previous conversations have focused on staying grounded while addressing the present rather than moving on from the past. The suffering she endures is ingrained in her existence. Being Gus's mother is an essential component of who she is, ingrained in her bones. Even though her leaving her family may further sour relations, she longs for the normal that she so desperately wants. Hillary gains the ability to be joyful, and Mercy gains the fortitude to receive the love of others. However, Margaret is unable to find closure as long as she is in the dark regarding her son. She might never discover them in reality. The closest she can get to feeling alive, though, is when she clenches her jaw and hums while walking ahead. Even though the show ends tragically, she is destined to discover how to live with her most painful aspect rather than ignore it. Hillary and Brinder stand in the hospital hallway with Deleep's other relatives as he is carried away to surgery. This creates a strange family portrait in a wide shot before they all leave the frame, leaving only an empty space and a sense of mystery. Shortly after Margaret Clark and the children permanently vacate their flat, the camera stays in the background, quietly intruding on packed boxes and blown curtains, as if it were pining for recollections of a life that was once lived but is now lost. Home ends with Margaret's narration, capturing a shot of her vanishing into a Hong Kong crowd, mirroring Mercy's entrance in the show. Following this, individuals quickly fly by the camera in close proximity. Even if the sentences don't quite make sense, this brief sequence of flashes heightens the episode's emotional peak and makes it feel incredibly stirring. 